great. As you can imagine, how this could be delightful to work with brilliant minds, young people who have kind of lots of energy to do lots of great things. And as you have realized in the presentations, one of the things that we try really hard is just making sure that everything would be fully transparent from the first step, putting everything outside, kind of putting every kind of single pieces of information we have, decision-making process. And what we are doing right now, we are in sort of in a development phase and we try to get everybody involved. And the pilot surveys are basically just for seeing how the system is working. And then we hope that other PIs, other principal investigators would be involved and they propose their own sort of project. So this is going to be a platform within ISAM that people would be able to use in the future. But we want to make sure that we validated the platform enough to make sure that it's kind of going to be a rigorous methodology to be able to make that happen. And I will discuss about how, how that could be happening in the, in the next steps. So for the last talk, we will have a few minutes to, to discuss at the end and have kind of receiving questions. I'm going to give you an idea about the idea that we have to have ISAM Global Expert Network as what we call beacons. And in this QR code, you can have my slides. So you can just kind of scan the QR code. You can have all the slides that we have. And if you want to have a slides after the, the talk, you can also kind of uh, send me an email, I can send you all the slides that we have here. So I work at the University of Minnesota, Department of Psychiatry, and also Center for Neural, Neural Circuits and Addiction, and I do not have any conflict of interest right now. So what we have as virtual collaborative networks in science, and what are the kind of the values within these networks, we call they are about diversity, equity, global representativeness, scientific rigor, open research consortiums, joint decision-making process. So these are the values that we are promoting. And this is the coin that we recently, this is the term that we recently coined to basically uh, make a framework for these sort of collaborations. But to start, we have ice cream here. So uh, if I give you this photo and I ask you to say, how much do you like to have an ice cream like this? from zero to 100, what would be the number that you allow, kind of you to say? As a food addict? <laughs> Nick? Or right now? Hundred, up to hundred, Nick? 17, okay. Rab Rabia? 70. What else? Five. Five. Garrett. <laughs> Nadi, I mean, Nadi, do you do like ice cream or? Oh, yes. <laughs> I see. Okay, good. So, yeah, we, we had the ice cream just kind of yesterday after the, the meeting. And it's just cross, I mean, just from like a few meters from, from the the conference center. So I highly recommend you to enjoy having uh, ice cream here. But basically the idea of kind of showing people a queue and that would queue be a starting point for kind of inducing what we call craving. That is the, the uh, really kind of a fundamental issue in, in, in drug addiction. And there is a recent systematic review published in JAMA Psychiatry just a few months ago from Hedy Kober discussing about basically assessment of curiosity activity should be a part of clinical assessment and practice in addiction because it's so kind of consistently replicated in different studies that could be predictor of relapse to, to drug use. And we need to consider drug curiosity activity as an important kind of fundamental issue in addiction treatment and in the assessment, assessment process. So we know that addiction curiosity activity is an important topic in addiction treatment. And the question is how we have been able to make a specific, what we call VCONs, virtual collaborative network, specifically on drug curiosity activity, and how that could basically change our practice. And that could be a good example 
to just give us an idea how that could help us in other areas of addiction to develop these VCONs within the, what we call the ISAM Global Expert Network. So that is the, the presentation I'm gonna give you in the next 10, 12 minutes. So when we, call, when we talk about VCONs, we talk about multiple levels of collaboration, okay? The first level is how we basically communicate, exchange information for mutual benefit. We do not do anything together, but we are kind of exchanging it like, like right now. So we are already in some like collaborative way of just networking. So we just exchange information. So that is the first step. And for being able to do that, specifically for addiction cure activity, we have started to have several webinars and people basically realize that we need to share the databases that we have. So we have started to put out the databases that we develop. Recently, we, we published one of the largest databases that we developed recently with opioid and, and met cues. And the database is fully validated. It is right now available in Drug and Alcohol Dependence Journal. And we published the entire database for those, and also the kind of the validation records, everything. And people can use the database right now. And after us, several other teams started recently to just basically publish their databases and make them publicly available for others to use. So that is one of the first steps that we basically started. And beyond that, we realized that we, we are using these databases for fMRI studies to see how brain would respond to the, these drug cues. And we need to have neutral cues as well as some like a controlled conditions. And for kind of for being able to do that, we have done lots of the studies. This is the kind of the, the brain response to these drug cues compared to the neutral contrast that we have. And we basically develop different days of databases. For example, we have a discovery sample, we have replication samples and some kind of repeated measurements. And we, we share all those fMRI tasks as well. So right now you can have access to all those fMRI tasks that we develop. And there are three equivalent versions. So you can do multiple measurements with, uh, with these, these kind of fMRI tasks. And we are making the fMRI databases also available for those who are interested to have uh, kind of those resources. So that was the first step of networking and exchanging and sharing the information that we have. But what will be the next level? The next level is how we might be able to have some coordinated activities. We are not still doing things together. We try to see how we can have a level of coordination together, how we can basically try to find some kind of mutual goals. We are not doing that together, but we are trying to develop a level of harmony between what we are doing in different labs. To be able to do that, we started to see how we can make some like a nomenclature or, or consensus on how to name interventions that are Q-based. And there are different interventions that are Q-based. We had a workshop or a webinar workshop discussing about Q-based interventions. And this is the kind of the YouTube channel that we have for ISAM. And I highly recommend you to, I highly kind of ask you to uh, subscribe in the ISAM YouTube channel, and we put all those videos right now available in ISAM video channel. And this is the uh, QR code to have access to the to the videos that Parnian nicely put together. So Parnian is the champion of doing that, putting all those pieces together, and she's also developing these sort of Q-based interventions, which is really really interesting. And we started to basically make a new categorization for all those Q-based databases. I'm not going to go into details, but we are defining them based on the cognitive processes that and, and brain networks are involved in the Curie activity steps. The other sort of coordinated activity that we recently done is just putting people together to increase the quality of reporting fMRI drug Curie activity studies. And for being able to do that, we have done a large systematic review of all fMRI drug curative studies. We did a group of people. We made a consortium of major experts in the field from, from different labs uh, through the, what we call Enigma Consortium. We developed a checklist. We revised the checklist. We asked people to rate the importance of different pieces of the checklist. 
And we developed a checklist of seven categories, 38 items, 75 recommendations of when you want to do an fMRI drug curative studies, what are the items that you need to report and what are the things that you need to consider in your study. And then we had a question in terms of, this is the, one of the questions of the reviewers asked, in terms of how much published studies are adherent to the checklist that you have already developed. So we checked that in our, uh, our systematic review, and we showed that many of these items that we consider as really important items to be reported are not really reported in most of the published kind of uh, studies that people have done. And now there are journals that basically they have started to think about considering those checklists in peer reviewing process for publications in the field, making that possible for others to be able to use these, basically making that transparent to use the, the published studies in the field. And this is the distribution that we have, as you can see here, there are just very few studies that they have over 80% adherence to the checklist that we are discussing about. So we, we think that that would change how people would report their, their uh, activities. And we have recently published that in Nature Protocols as a sort of consensus statement for those who are interested to do fMRI drug cure activity. So that is another level of coordinated activity between different labs trying to see how we can do some kind of uh, having some mutual goals. So we, we developed a consortium we called Enigma Addiction Cure Activity. The third level is what we call cooperating. So it is another level of interaction. So we go from coordinated activity to a cooperative activities. So now we start to see how we can basically have our individual identities, but we start to do things together. So one of the things that we have recently started to do is what we call a mega analysis. So we, then we are working on a specific pipeline for task-based fMRI to, and we are receiving databases from different labs. So far, we collected 3,000 patients' data with fMRI drug cure activity, and we are receiving more databases from different labs. And it is not just meta-analysis. We do a kind of fMRI analysis for each individual patient again, and we are putting them together in a really large database. And we are also realizing that we need to get to a level of harmonization between different tasks that people are doing. So we have started a new survey that we basically give people information, as you can see here. We, we tell people, okay, this is the distribution of fMRI task duration that we already have in the field. But if you want to have one task that could be used, what, what would be your recommendation in terms of the, the, the duration of that? So this is a process of how we can get people involved in, in kind of developing harmonized tasks together. The other thing that we are doing in the same context is to see how we can negotiate with FDA and to encourage them to accept fMRI drug cure activity, some specific markers from fMRI drug cure activity as different types of biomarkers. And for being able to do that, we had another series of webinars, discussions with different colleagues. We had a, a panel in ACMP last year. Uh, uh, Kathleen Brady was one of the, the leaders on, on that kind of discussions that we had. We had people from industry. We had Nora Volkov, George Coop, others. And we have been discussing how we can get to a level of quality <laughs> to have fMRI as a biomarker. And that was an interaction with, with multiple agencies to see how that happened. So you can see, we can just get together and see how we can make a coalition to make that happen. And we recently put together something like a specific roadmap or pipeline, how to interact with FDA. And we started to do some negotiation in terms of how we can go to the next level. And the fourth level is basically collaborate in terms of doing things together. So now we just try to have joint goals, joint identities working together. And one of the recent things that we are working on right now is just asking FDA to give us interest letter. And for being able to do that, we are basically doing another analysis on all the published studies in the field based on different levels of biomarker, based on the specific guideline that FDA has. And we are doing that together to be able to put together a a specific FDA letter of interest. And also we are working on a new level of collaboration 
on basically what we call defining the best target for, for neuromodulation. And this is another kind of multi-lab collaboration that we have just recently started just a few weeks ago. And that's a kind of major question. I, I will give you more details in another talk I will have, but this is something that we have started. We had a webinar on July 27th on optimized non-invasive brain stimulation addiction treatment. Right now, the webinar is available on YouTube. If you scan the QR code, you can find the, the, the webinar. We had lots of really interesting discussions there. But the idea is basically in different people, I mean, there are different areas that are going to be more important. And we are discussing how to find the best target in the individual level. And I will discuss about that in a webinar, in, in a kind of panel that we'll have on Thursday, 10 45 a.m. Uh, with other colleagues that we have. So we'll discuss about technologies and I will discuss about that level of collaboration that we are doing together. So technically, this is how we bring people together and make sure that we can have a virtual collaboration together. And this is the framework that we are also following in, in ISAM Global Expert Network. So we start from kind of lower expectations and then we go ahead and try to extend the interactions. So within the ISAM community, we have published what we call a kind of a roadmap for bringing neuroscience to addiction treatment and make a real change. This is one of the, uh, the recent publications that we have done within the ISAM community. And we are developing a new consortium specifically on prevention, on addiction prevention, neuroscience informed addiction prevention. And this is the kind of preprint that we put in Med Archive just two, three days ago, I think, uh, with a group of colleagues that you already can see some of the names that we already have on that collaboration. So we have, we have done a large systematic review of all, of all prevention studies in addiction and tried to see how we can put them in our doc domain so we can, we can discuss about that another level of collaboration. We also put together another Delphi consensus on cognitive training and remediation and addiction treatment. And there's another level of collaboration to, to see how we might be able to bring cognitive training and remediation into addiction treatment. And this is under review in, in one of the journals. I probably cannot tell that. The, but if you are a reviewer, please, please be kind with us. So that is, I mean, this is another thing that is, that is under, under review for, for publications. It's still a preprint in, in Med Archive. And also about using brain stimulation in addiction treatment, the consensus paper. I think it has been cited for during the last two years for some 200 times, people, and that's a consensus how, how to use kind of those resources for, for addiction treatment. Last slide. Based on what we have done, we realized that we basically, if you want to do the same, you're highly welcome. We are gonna have continue these discussions in terms of how we can continue these collaborations in the future. We start with the question and curiosity that we have. We run series of webinars. We make sure that we know what people have done in the field with systematic reviews. We try to kind of define the parameter space of the field. We really want to share whatever we have in terms of the methodology and the experience that people have. We try to push the methodological transparency in the field as a goal. We try to explore potentials for harmonization in the field and also find platforms for databases for mega analysis from different labs to, to collaborate. And we also kind of working on, on different kind of joint applications for funds. And that's always an important issue to make sure that there would be enough funding for that. And we also really like to support junior investigators and students, young colleagues. So that is one of the values that we uh, significantly promote within the, within the community. And we, want to make sure that we'll have a diversified contribution from across the board and, and sharing, sharing kind of values that we have within the ISM community. So these are the resources that are available right now. I mean, you can find them. This is the kind of the uh, QR code that I kind of like to ask you to scan. This is the YouTube channel that we have in ISAM. And I checked today, we had some like 248 subscribers. So I was wondering how many people would subscribe today. So please subscribe to the ISAM YouTube channel. And that is a resource for those who are interested to have those kind of uh, resources that we develop and videos that, that would be helpful. And we are trying to encourage others to propose 
frameworks or questions or studies that are interested to use. And we already have a, a list of different things that we have started uh, with, with different collaborators. We have started a new idea on, for example, forcibly displaced population across the world and how people can collaborate on that. So there are open doors for people who are interested to join us. Today, during the launch break, we will be in room number four in the level zero, so leave kind of the under the level under this floor. And we will be there for those who have questions, who are interested to, to discuss about ideas, and we'll be here for the next three days of the conference to, to kind of answer questions. Atul will be here, Mark, Alex, I will be here. Also, kind of our young colleagues will be here and they will be happy to, to answer questions. And thank you very much. It was we had 180 slides and we made it. So thank you very much. Thank you.